He knew a mystery when he saw it and he couldn't explain it. We should be open-minded enough to consider the possibility that some of the answers may sit outside of our current perspective. What do conventional archaeologists say when they're confronted by all this data? Ever wondered what went on inside those magnificent pyramids of ancient Egypt? Well, buckle up because we're about to delve into the fascinating world of the ancient pyramid texts. These inscriptions carved onto the pyramid walls around 2400 to 2300 BCE are like a window into the hearts and minds of the people who built these incredible structures. These texts weren't just random scribbles, they were meticulously crafted during a pivotal period in Egyptian history, the twilight of the Old Kingdom. This era is famous for the iconic pyramids, those towering tombs for pharaohs. The pyramids themselves are a testament to the Egyptians' architectural genius and their deep understanding of math and engineering. But the pyramid texts are more than just historical footnotes. They're the earliest known religious writings from Egypt, offering a glimpse into the beliefs and practices of this ancient civilization. They're like cultural snapshots showing how art, architecture and religion were all woven together. The pyramids themselves were seen as the ultimate expression of both religious devotion and the pharaoh's supreme power. Speaking of power, the pharaohs of the Old Kingdom weren't just seen as leaders, they were considered living gods. This concept of divine kingship was the glue that held society together, justifying the pharaoh's absolute authority. The pyramid texts are all about this. They're basically spells and instructions meant to help the pharaoh navigate the afterlife and join the gods, further solidifying the idea of their godlike status. Imagine a society where the pharaoh is at the top of the pyramid, wielding immense power. That's exactly what the old kingdom was like. This centralized system allowed them to mobilize the massive resources and manpower needed to build the pyramids. It also meant the government had a tight grip on things, controlling people and resources to a great extent. But running a complex society like this wasn't a walk in the park. It required a well-oiled bureaucratic machine, and that's what the Egyptians had. This network of officials kept things running smoothly, organizing labor, managing resources, and handling the countless details of daily life. It was a sophisticated system for a sophisticated society. We've talked about the cultural significance of the pyramid texts and the social structure of the Old Kingdom, but how did they manage to pull off such massive building projects? Building a pyramid wasn't like putting together a piece of IKEA furniture. It required serious resources and manpower. Imagine this, hauling giant blocks of stone, transporting them for miles and feeding a whole army of workers for years on end. That's what the Egyptians had to do to build the pyramids. It was a massive undertaking, requiring a well-oiled economic engine. Here's where things get interesting. Contrary to popular belief, the pyramids weren't built by slaves, but by a paid workforce. These workers were likely skilled laborers, artisans, and even seasonal workers, and they were treated pretty well. We found evidence of medical care, food, and even some form of compensation. So how could they afford all this? The answer lies in a concept called economic surplus. Basically, they had enough resources left over after taking care of basic needs like food and shelter to invest in these grand projects. This surplus came from their mastery of agriculture thanks to the Nile River's annual floods. These floods enriched the land and allowed them to grow more food than they needed to survive, freeing up people to work on other things like, you guessed it, building pyramids. But the pyramids are more than just piles of stone, they're symbols too. Many believe they represent the rays of the sun, a pathway for the pharaoh's soul to reach the heavens. This symbolism is deeply connected to the pyramid texts, which are filled with references to the sun god Ra. It all goes back to the Egyptians' belief system, where religion, royalty, and the universe were all interconnected. Speaking of connections, the pyramid texts are like the great-grandparents of later Egyptian religious texts. They paved the way for things like the coffin texts and the Book of the Dead, these later texts show how Egyptian beliefs evolved over time, adapting and becoming more accessible to people beyond just the pharaohs. So we've explored the economic engine behind the pyramids and the deeper meaning they hold. But let's not forget the pyramids themselves. They weren't just giant piles of stone. They were meticulously designed and built with a specific purpose in mind. Imagine these pyramids as giant tombs, built to house the bodies and possessions of pharaohs after they passed away. But they weren't just storage units. 
They were designed to help the pharaoh's soul on its journey to the afterlife, and that's where the pyramid texts come in. These inscriptions were like a guidebook for the pharaoh's soul, offering spells and protection every step of the way. The most famous pyramid containing these texts belongs to Unas, the last ruler of the fifth dynasty. His pyramid, located in Saqqara, was the first to include these inscriptions, paving the way for future pharaohs to follow suit. Think of it like a new trend once Unas did it, other pharaohs like Teti, Pepi Bawam and even Pepi II decided they wanted pyramid texts too. These texts weren't just scribbled on any old piece of papyrus, they were painstakingly carved into the very walls of the pyramids by skilled artisans. Imagine the dedication and precision it took to etch those intricate hieroglyphs into stone. This not only shows the skill of the craftsmen, but also highlights the importance of the texts themselves. They were considered so sacred and valuable that they deserved a permanent and prominent place within the pyramids. Speaking of sacredness, these texts were like the holy scripts of their time. They contained spells, prayers and hymns, all designed to ensure the pharaoh's safe passage to the afterlife and even his transformation into a god. The fact that they were placed inside the pyramids, which were themselves seen as sacred spaces, further emphasizes their importance. But here's the interesting part, initially these texts were an exclusive club. Only the pharaohs got to enjoy their benefits, further solidifying their divine status in society. It kind of reflects the hierarchical structure of the time where access to certain religious practices and texts was restricted to the privileged few. However, things eventually changed. Over time, the concepts and spells found in the pyramid texts started to trickle down to the broader Egyptian population. This led to the development of the coffin texts, and later the famous Book of the Dead. These later texts mark a turning point, making spells and rituals for the afterlife more accessible, not just for the pharaohs but for regular people too. So the pyramid texts, originally exclusive to the pharaohs, became the seed for a more democratic approach to the afterlife in ancient Egypt. Now, imagine unearthing a piece of history that rewrites what we know about writing. That's exactly what happened in the 1920s when the Kish tablet was discovered in the ancient city of Kish, Mesopotamia. This wasn't just any clay tablet, it was a game changer offering a glimpse into the very origins of writing and the fascinating society that developed it. Kish was no ordinary town. Located along the Euphrates River, it was a bustling hub of trade, politics and culture, attracting people from far and wide. This melting pot of cultures likely played a key role in the birth of writing as different people brought their own symbols and ways of record-keeping, eventually leading to the development of proto-cuneiform script. The discovery of the Kish tablet itself is a story of collaboration. Archaeologists from the Field Museum of Natural History, led by Stephen Langdon, joined forces with other experts to uncover the secrets of Kish. Back then, excavation techniques were evolving, becoming more systematic and meticulous, which was crucial for carefully preserving and documenting this historic find. But what's so special about this tablet? Well, the writing system on it is like a Rosetta Stone of the ancient world. It's one of the earliest examples of written communication, showcasing the transition from picture-based symbols to the complex wedge-shaped script known as cuneiform. This shift reflects the growing complexity of Sumerian society, as people needed new ways to keep track of things. The creation and use of the Kish tablet also hint at a well-organized society. Imagine a city-state managing resources, governing its people, and even engaging in trade with other regions. Writing wasn't just about leaving messages, it was essential for recording transactions, laws, and important decisions. But the impact of writing goes beyond practicalities. It opened doors for cultural expression and the preservation of knowledge. With writing, the Sumerians could record their myths, laws, and historical events, ensuring they weren't lost to time. This paved the way for the rich literary traditions that flourished in the ancient Near East. The Kish tablet is a reminder that writing wasn't just a random invention. It was a necessity for keeping complex societies running smoothly. It also opened doors for cultural exchange and the preservation of knowledge across generations. This discovery continues to spark debates among scholars, with some questioning whether writing originated independently in Mesopotamia or was influenced by other cultures. The mystery surrounding the exact function and content of the tablet adds to its allure, making it a captivating piece of history that continues to captivate archaeologists and historians alike.